Is it possible to make great drawings on the cheapest paper you can find in a discount store? Or should you use expensive drawing paper made specifically for professional artists? Stay tuned because I will be testing and comparing the both of them. Now I know what you're going to think, that's not much of a challenge at all, but the results might surprise you, so let's go! I bought the multi-purpose paper in a discount store, they don't even have a web shop, but usually a package of 500 sheets costs like 2 or 3 euros, which makes one sheet of paper cost less than a cent. The Strathmore paper can be bought on Amazon and it's actually a bit cheaper in the United States than in Europe. It says 80 cents per sheet over here, but as you can see it's a little more expensive in the Netherlands and there's some shipping fee too, making it about 1 euro a sheet. So, as far as price goes, we have a clear winner, the multi-purpose paper! Now before I go any further, what is vellum surface paper even? I had to look that up. According to Wikipedia, it's prepared animal skin. What are we dealing with here? Oh wait, modern vellum paper is made of synthetic plant material. Synthetic? So it's not even real paper? What does Strathmore have to say about this? Oh, it's just a finish, and it describes a somewhat toothy surface on drawing or bristol paper. Ok, well, that sounds reasonable. When comparing both papers, there's two things I notice. The Strathmore bristol vellum surface is slightly bigger than an A4 sheet of multipurpose paper. Um, it's not a mistake, it actually says so on the front of both papers, uh, but I didn't notice it until I had both of them laying right next to each other. Well, what can you do? It's fine, the Strathmore is a little bigger. Also, the Strathmore looks very robust, it's thick, uh, it looks very nice, while on the other hand the multi-purpose paper is very thin, it's almost a bit uh, transparent and it's very floppy. So let's give the Strathmore one point for overall look and feel. So what are we going to draw? I went to pixabay.com where you can find great reference photos which you can use for free. I thought drawing a red bell pepper would be fun, so here's the one I chose and of course I put the link in the description of the video. Let's start with making a sketch of the bell pepper. Now I will divide the drawing process in a few steps, the first being sketching and um, then I'll repeat this step for both papers before going on to the next step. So the sketching. I'm so sorry if some of you disagree, but I do love making sketches on cheap multipurpose paper. Because you can mess up, just grab a new sheet, try again for like exactly 500 times because that's the amount of papers that are in the package. So it's just a very stress free paper to sketch on and it's also nice and smooth which is also great for sketching. Also um, it's like a bit transparent, it's not really transparent but just a little so if you don't want to spend a lot of time on your sketch for whatever reason you can simply trace things, possibly while using a light pad, which won't work on the Strathmore paper because no light is coming through it no matter if you're using a light pad or not. When sketching on the Strathmore on the other hand, well, there's just a little more stress involved there because you don't want to make too many mistakes. As far as the sketching itself goes, it's perfectly fine. I personally prefer my paper to be a little more smooth for sketching, but that's just personal opinion. So let's give the point for sketching to the cheap paper because it's smoother and stress free. If we're going to sketch, we probably also will be erasing, so let's include that in the test as well. Multipurpose paper erases just fine, but only as long as you're careful. If you go all out on erasing, then this might happen. Whoops, yeah, you don't want that. On the Strathmore, well, it's erasing fine as well. There's a little more residue kinda holding on to the paper or sticking to the paper, which you have to remove very carefully because if you don't it will cause problems later on. So with the cheap paper you have to be careful not to wrinkle it and with the Strathmore you have to deal with residue, so let's call this a tie and they either both get a point or none of them, well let's give them both a point. Finally some color, we're going to shade the base layer. I mentioned this before, but the cheap paper is very, very smooth. Now that's something some people love and some people hate. 
I love smooth paper, so this is making me happy. It's easy to get the base layer in very evenly and very smooth without being troubled by the tooth of the paper too much. So this is nice. On the Strathmore vellum paper, there's a little more of the tooth of the paper showing when making a base layer by drawing very lightly. But by keeping the pencil sharp, I still manage to not get those huge white holes in between my color. What I do notice right away is that there's more pigment making its way to the paper, probably due to the rougher surface. Now that's a big upside, but the graininess displeases me, so the point for the base layer goes to the multi-purpose paper. We're going to use some solvent now! I use Zested Pencil Blend because that's what I have. Um, I have to admit that I usually don't use liquid blending methods at all. The chemicals in there give me headaches. And though the Zested Pencil Blend at least smells reasonably okay, I always have been fine without it. But for this test to be complete, I suppose I must do this! So, on the multi-purpose paper it works fine, it blends the pencil just a little bit, but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Possibly because there's simply not that much pigment on the paper. It does spread a lot as you can see and it looks very wet and the paper becomes very dark because of the wetness and I'm a bit afraid of damaging the paper. On the Strathmore paper the Zested works wonders! I already mentioned while working on the base layer that there was more pigment transfer to the paper and when using this solvent that becomes very clear. The color is getting intense and deep and it's blending just very well and it doesn't seem to get as wet as it did on the cheap paper. On the Strathmore the Zested really works amazingly well. So the point for using solvent is going to the Strathmore paper. Now let's let this dry for the night because I don't want to draw on this any further until the solvent has dried. And then on to layering! This stage is going to be somewhat a combination of layering and blending with colored pencils and I'm starting again with the multi-purpose paper. And I'm not unhappy. The colors are getting quite intense and I can put quite a few layers on the paper. Blending several layers goes pretty well too but when trying to put white on top of it, the results are mixed. It gets a bit messy sometimes and the edges aren't always blended as smoothly as I would like. The highlights are getting too dark and I can't really fix them because at some point I'm unable to get more white on the paper, so it's not perfect. Then on to the Strathmore. This is not bad you guys! At first I was worried about the roughness of the paper, but it turns out I did not have to be that worried at all. I can make as much layers as I like on this paper, but if I don't want to make a lot of layers it works just as well. If I make just one layer with a lot of pressure, it's just fine too, and the blending goes so well. What I like most about this paper is that there doesn't seem to be an end to the amount of layers I can put on here. I was just complaining about the cheap paper that I was unable to get the highlights any lighter at some point. Well, this paper accepts them and it accepts about any color I put on it, no matter the underlying color. It's very accepting paper. I can make lighter red spots on top of darker, I can add more white to the highlights if I want to, and the colors blend a lot easier than on the cheap paper. So I'm really really happy about how this is going, uh, and without a doubt the point for layering is going to the Strathmore paper. What else do we need? Um, details, I guess. Now, there's not a lot of details on the pepper itself, but there are some details on the green part, which is possibly called a trunk. Not sure about that, but let's just stick to it. So, I started drawing these green parts on both papers with streaky motions, because in the reference the texture of this trunk um, looked very streaky. And then on the cheap paper this caused the result to become too streaky, and I couldn't really manage to smoothen it out in a way that looked a bit more natural. Even though this isn't a big problem and other people might not even really see it, it kind of bothers me slightly. On the Strathmore the result was better, it has a more natural, uh, more even look, though there's still details in it. It has the streakiness of a bell pepper trunk without it looking too scratchy and things are just blended naturally and it looks quite fine. So for the details part, let's also get the point to the Strathmore. There you have it! 
two bell peppers, which I just keep calling paprikas in my mind, which look eerily similar when you compare them. Because of the heavy and professional look of the Strathmore paper, I have to give the point for the end result though to the Strathmore. Imagine doing a commission on cheap paper and then let a client pay for it. That would be slightly weird. So, when it comes to drawing properties, the Strathmore got the most points, meaning it is a lot nicer to work on than the cheap multipurpose paper. I would definitely pick the Strathmore any day, even though the cheap paper does have some advantages as well. Because this outcome definitely does not render the cheap paper useless. As you can see, you can achieve similar end results on this paper. It's great for practicing and it's great for drawing if you just want to create something for yourself or to post on Instagram, for example, and you don't want to spend a euro or a dollar every time you draw something. Because basically, that's what it comes down to when you're using Strathmore. Now, one last disclaimer, I was using professional colored pencils on both papers, so I suppose it doesn't matter for this particular test, but I can imagine people saying, I can't afford a Strathmore paper, and then I sure as hell can't afford those pencils. And I get that. That's why I ordered a very cheap set of 24 colored pencils, which I will be testing very soon, and of course I'm going to show you the results later on. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and press the bell notification button if you don't want to miss that video. Now thank you so much for watching, see you next time, bye bye!